Peace and blessings. It's your boy, James Anthony. And as we learn together, we define limitless. First and foremost, I want to thank the Most High God, King of Kings, Jesus Christ, because without him, none of this would be unfolding. Protecting ourselves with the armor of God is essential in today's climate and the only way forward. I want to start off by saying this is not financial advice, nor are we financial advisors. This is just a rare opportunity that needs to be shared and highlighted far and wide because very, very few researchers and content creators are sharing this information. Shout out to JTXRP, as well as Chaos Dubs, who is here with us today as my co-host for highlighting this incredible ecosystem, where not only can I create a daily passive income stream that I can compound, but also a multiple bi-weekly passive income stream that I can also compound as well, all while the assets don't leave my custody through a soft staking mechanism implemented by StakeX. Just let that sink in. We are very, very much blessed to sit with Patrick Riley, who's the CEO of Reaper Financial Weekly, to go over the ins and outs in real time of this incredible opportunity. What's the good word, big bro? Can you just introduce yourself and briefly give us a rundown of Reaper? Well, thank you, James and Chaos. A pleasure as always. So Reaper is a token on the XRP ledger, which we use to go out and buy and destroy other cryptocurrencies while paying a passive income. Soon we'll be releasing debt reaping, which means instead of just destroying other uh, cryptocurrencies, we'll be able to destroy your personal debts, <laughs> your mortgage, your student loans, your credit cards, your car note. Uh, hopefully not the car itself, but no promises. <laughs> uh, we also have a secondary product called Ascension, in which we purchase other uh, highly vetted projects and we distribute them to all Ascension holders. And right now there are 12 different tokens that are distributed every two weeks to Ascension holders. And as James said, you can go out and stake those for daily passive income of the same tokens. Uh, within uh, about two weeks here, we'll be releasing ARC, which is a uh, charity driven token in which we'll be changing the way that we change the world. Essentially, you'll be able to use our token to fund a uh, highly vetted charity. And those charities, instead of spending their money to uh, market and to raise money, they'll be able to go out and help people. Well, instead of you losing anything to help those people, you're actually gaining passive income in Reaper and Ascension token. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, every time we speak, I just get blown away by what's coming next. What about these NFTs? I mean, you guys just launched uh, a new series. What's going on with that? I can only imagine how uh, difficult that was. You, you had the artist Sumi Sticks create something? Yep, X-Stick and Sumi Stick are our partners and they've been making our NFTs for Reaper Financial. Uh, that includes the Genesis Blood Money and now Marshall's series. Uh, Genesis series was 100 uh, NFTs and those sold out within the first 24 hours. The blood money was only 10 and they were higher priced. Those sold out in uh, under a week. And now the Marshalls we are selling every every week, 10 of them for 10 weeks. And the first circle sold out in under an hour. So what's this circle thing? I, I heard you mention it on Twitter too. Can you give us a, a little understanding of what that technically means? Sure. So we did the circles basically as a reverse from what we did with ARC, which is the gates. So with ARC, we have 12 gates. And I don't know if many people have caught that yet, but the gates are the gates to heaven. And with this uh, NFT set, because it is the Reaper, we wanted to have a little bit of fun with it. So we have the circles of limbo, lust, gluttony, avarice, wrath, heresy, violence, fraud, and treachery, which are the nine circles of hell by Dante's Inferno. Mm -hmm. So it's really just a, a little bit of a, a fun reference and uh, nothing quite meant by it, but uh, it's good for the artwork and it, it's good for inspiration. Thing. Nothing meant by it. Hey, that's exactly what someone who means something by it. <laughs> uh, speaking about numbers and symbols, why are you so fascinated with um, esoteric symbology, if you don't mind me asking? So I, I've been studying esoterics for uh, a few years now, and I'm 
quite certain that there is a knowledge that has been lost to humanity from a previous uh, age of mankind, which was about 11,600 years ago. It was wiped out by a cataclysm that we know as the Great Flood. Uh, I do look forward to going more in depth on that. Uh, however, I will wait till I'm out of the military before I, I speak on that. That's something to definitely look forward to. I want to talk about these NFTs a little bit. Uh, I pulled a comment that you made from the group. I'll read it and you can kind of elaborate. You said the apes and Reaper NFTs are separate. The apes are the ones I personally minted and are awarded 50% of new sales and royalties periodically when the wallet passes 10,000 XRP. I will be doing a 50-50 RPR ASC and may change up the and may change up and play with the reward structure a bit, adding ARC or other things as I go. Yep. So the the Reaper NFTs are an official uh, product and representation of Reaper Financial, whereas I have minted some uh, um, some lines of NFTs myself. Basically, while I was playing with them, I, I realized how much those NFTs were making as a uh, a portion of Reaper Financial's income. So I decided it would be worthwhile to start learning to uh, build that myself. Uh, I was playing around with apes because uh, back when I started this uh, 3D apes had basically um, for like And uh, so I decided I'd, I'd see what I could do about making some 3D apes that could uh, could be released and uh, I went with rippled apes. So they're basically bodybuilders. And it was just kind of to, to have fun and play around a little bit with the softwares and uh, you know learn as I go. I've gotten better with it, but I am not an artist. I'm no Sumi stick. So, uh, um, but at some time it, it's a good way for me to experiment with the different uh, benefits for the NFTs with the royalties and with paying out passive income and different uh, income models. So the uh, the reward system for those is uh, mirrored roughly to the, the Reaper financial ones. And so basically somebody holding somebody, a, a first time buyer would, would buy one of these NFTs and then the next set that comes out they will receive rewards for holding throughout the duration? Uh, so that's how it works for Reapers. For my own personal sets, it'll just be every time the wallet that was from sales and or royalties passes 10,000 in value uh, of XRP, we'll, I'll go out and I'll purchase ASC and Reaper in 50-50 and distribute it to the holders. To me, not to me, what's his name? Michael was telling us that they have a developer that created the rich list and they did it for you guys as well. Right. And does that go for your personal collection as well? Yes. So I, I have my own uh, personal collection called uh, Riley's rippled reserves. And that is basically my, my rich list. And uh, I think uh, it might be on our link tree, which hopefully Twitter hasn't banned yet, but uh, <laughs> we, uh, we, we do have that out there. Uh, I'll have to think of a good way to post that up. That's not in, not in conflict. What's a good strategy to try to get involved if someone is semi new to the NFT game, but love the artwork and the utility that Reaper brings? Well, so the first strategy I'd say is, uh, figuring out whether it's you, you want NFTs as personal collectibles, whether you want it for income or investment, or whether you want to be somebody creating the NFTs, or if it's some mixture of the three. So, uh, there's multiple different things you can be doing in the NFT space and, uh, beyond just, you know, the images and gifts and collectibles, there's also things like PDFs and official documents and contracts and things like that, that will be coming into the NFT space. And those will be a lot more boring and probably a lot more uh, enriching for somebody that that takes those on. Uh, so really, um, once you know what you want to do, uh, do your research as you would with anything else and just start practicing. You can always uh, mint things and destroy them without having to sell them. So uh, yeah, just play with it. And the learning curve is, is going to start to become manageable. Yeah, that's what I that's what I've been doing. Actually, I just destroyed a bunch of XLS 14s 
uh, because I'm going to now set up a completely different wallet. So that will be specifically for NFTs. I'm, I'm taking a, a page out of your book because you guys are definitely doing it the right way, without a doubt. So the 40 cent mark is for the reaping to move from bi-weekly to weekly. There's a lot of variables that go into determining when the yield earned from the permanent drip fund currently earning no yield for safety precautions. The current criteria for moving to the PDF instead of the stimulus drip is when the yield earned to be shared to RPR holders is more than 25% of the reaping funds currently used for stimulus drip. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yep. So basically the, the permanent drip fund is going to be, you know, staked or put into a safe, uh, whatever the safest method we possibly can get to produce interest is. Um, so right now, because of exchange volatility following the FTX saga, we have withdrawn that to a hardware wallet, but only, um, you know, out of an abundance of caution and, and at the same time, it would not be producing enough to be the, the primary for a, a good amount of time anyways. Uh, but essentially, if we are able to produce a greater amount of interest than the drip stimulus within a reaping period, so meaning the one week in between if we're over the 40 cents by then, uh, then the drip fund would take over and only the interest would be paid out and the full 50%, the stimulus currently and the uh, the funds that go to the permanent drip, that full 50% would go to the permanent drip while the interest continues to be paid out. What that effectively does is it makes it much more predictable how much that uh, drip will be. And it also makes a steady growth curve. What do um, holders of Reaper Ascension and soon to be ARC, what, you know, what are we looking towards over the next three to six months? What are some exciting things that we can look forward to? Well, definitely debt reaping. So once debt reaping goes into beta, I expect there'll be quite a, a swell of information around that. Also with myself uh, officially getting out of the military in about 11 days here, I'll be available and able to go onto bigger publications and different interviews that I, I was previously restricted from. Uh, so that will be a, a big help as far as my ability to travel and my ability to uh, appear publicly. So why is it that we have been blessed to have been graced with your presence? How is that uh, so if you've been semi-restricted? Uh, so, so I didn't ask permission to uh, be interviewed for uh, YouTubes, but for example, um, I would have been attending the Beta Blocks uh, reality TV show this last summer. Uh, but basically I, I had to ask the army to do anything that would have been network TV or uh, for example, Fox business. I had an opportunity to go on Fox business. I couldn't do it. Wow. Uh, basically the, the Pentagon told me no. Wow. So this is interesting. Once that uh, 11 day um, comes and passes, Patrick will be allowed to speak on the global platform that'll just really skyrocket everything that's going on i can only imagine uh i look to bring a lot of awareness to a lot of things uh, i look to bring a lot of awareness to a lot of things yes sir yes sir yes sir absolutely incredible ah uh, convention reaper convention when and where so we're looking at April or May in the Austin metro area, uh, Austin, Texas. And that's just kind of for, uh, it, if I'm being honest, it's a little bit for simplicity since it'll be our first one running it. We want to have the, uh, you know, the ability to go and, and make sure we have maximum oversight and setting up and the venue and that sort of thing. So we can get comfortable with uh, running that type of convention. And then once we've done a couple, we'll, we'll start uh, finding other locations. Yeah, that's awesome. That's something major to look forward to. Can you give us um, an update on what's going on with Block Oversight? I know that just recently launched. launched. 
Yep. So Block Oversight is live, and since it went live, we uh, we have had about six applications for uh, other projects to join. And I, I know the founder. Um, I don't know if he's the only founder, but a doctor from uh, Uphold has recommended to all Uphold uh, listed cryptocurrencies to apply to the block. So. Uh, it's going good, and uh, it'll be a, a grinding process over time, but it'll uh, it'll definitely improve this space uh, over time. And what about as far as art goes? I know that's coming up pretty soon. Uh, what's the status on the trust lines and the airdrop? Can you give us a little bit on that? Sure. So the trust lines have passed 60,000 trust lines for ARC. We did do a snapshot initially once they passed with some very strict uh, farmer account um, criteria. And basically that gave us 42,000 trust lines. It ruled out about 18,000. Uh, we do not plan on using the criteria quite that strict on release. But we are going to let it appreciate up to about 70,000 and then run it again with some more leeway and see where that puts us. Uh, as far as progress for ARC, we have vetted and passed three charities through the gates currently, and we're looking at another three or four tonight. Uh, and so hopefully those will be uh, made public uh, later this week. Is the website live yet for the public as far as art goes? The website is not public yet, but it is looking uh, much, much better than a uh, blank page. So it, it, it'll be ready in time. And, and there'll be a place where the community members can recommend um, charities that they come across, perhaps. Uh, yes, there'll, there'll be a way for them to recommend, but also a way for the charities themselves to come and apply. And we'll, we're going to set that up as basically a Google form similar to what's on the block website where they can self audit and apply to the block. The charities will come and apply for an ARC listing in much the same way. And it's always an honor to have you on. I, I look forward to our chats. And um, is there anything you want to finish off with before we get out of here? I like your uh, limitless uh, NFT there in the background. That's pretty legit. Yes, absolutely. That was made by um, Sumi Sticks. I did the custom NFT package, and we're very excited. In fact, we're gonna—he's gonna announce it in all the groups tomorrow. So, very exciting. Yeah, man. Thanks to you. You're the one who put me in touch. So, no doubt. I didn't have much to say, but I learned a bunch. So, as always, <laughs> it's a pleasure. All right. Thank you. Peace and blessings, everyone. See you on the next one. Securities and Exchange Commission Chairman Gary Gensler uh, hid public information, apparently, about private meetings he had with Hillary Clinton, billionaire George Soros, even Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. He's actually editing out these meetings from the public. He's actually editing out these meetings from the public. Right?